In the summer after 8th grade, I had the house all to myself for a whole week. My parents trusted me, and I was stoked. But then things got weird. It started with texts from an unknown number. I thought it was a prank, so I ignored them and focused on my games. Late one night, I heard a knock on my bedroom window. Nobody was there when I looked, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. My phone lost service, and that's when things got scary. There were noises outside, like someone calling for help. I grabbed a bat and went to check, thinking it might be a setup. But as I approached the woods, the person asking for help wasn't tied up like they said. They started running at me, and I ran back home, locking every door. He tried breaking in, mocking and yelling. Eventually, he smashed a window and came inside. I hid and defended myself when he entered my room. It was self-defense, but it changed everything. I had to run to a friend's house to call the police. The police came in hot, sirens wailing through the night. I was shaking, telling them what happened in a haze. They had to do their thing, checking every inch of the house, asking me questions over and over. I felt like a broken record, saying the same stuff again and again. They took the guy's body away, and I couldn't help but feel this mix of relief and horror. I mean, I defended myself, but knowing I took a life, it weighed heavy. They told me they had to take me in for questioning. I was a minor, so they needed my parents too. Sitting in that cold, sterile room was like being in a nightmare. Cops firing questions left and right, scribbling notes, the whole nine yards. My parents looked worried but they knew I didn't do anything wrong. It was all self-defense, but it didn't stop the knot in my stomach from growing. The officers kept asking about every detail, like they were trying to piece together a puzzle. They needed to know every move, every sound, every breath. And I did my best to spill it all out, like replaying a movie that I didn't want to see again. Eventually, they said I could go home. My parents were relieved, but the whole thing changed everything. I couldn't sleep right, every noise made me jump. Nightmares were the norm, and it felt like my world was flipped upside down. The cops kept in touch, updating us on what they found. Turns out, the guy had a record. He wasn't just some random creep, he was trouble with a capital T. It didn't make me feel better, though. Knowing that he had a past just made it all scarier. The days after that felt like forever. The police did their thing, and they said it was self-defense. But I couldn't shake the feeling that it wasn't over. I mean, that guy knew where I lived, right? What if he had friends? What if they came for revenge? My parents did their best to reassure me, but I was on edge. We beefed up security, installed cameras, and made sure everything was locked down tight. Still, I couldn't shake the fear that he wasn't alone in this. The news caught wind of the story, and suddenly, it was all over. Reporters camping outside, trying to get a scoop. I didn't want to be the center of attention. I just wanted to forget it all, to go back to being a regular kid. School started, and everyone treated me differently. Some were scared, some were curious, and some were just plain nosy. I didn't want to talk about it, but it seemed like everyone had questions. I just wanted to disappear into the background. The nightmares didn't stop. Every night, I'd see his face, that wolf mask, the hammer. It was like a horror movie playing on repeat in my head. I started avoiding sleep, staying up till I couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. Months passed, and things calmed down. The reporters vanished, and people stopped asking so many questions. But the fear lingered, like a shadow I couldn't shake off. I tried to bury it under schoolwork, video games, anything to distract myself. Years have gone by, and I'm older now. But that night, that whole ordeal, it feels like it was just yesterday. I've grown quieter, more cautious. It's like a part of me changed, like I lost something I can't quite name. The house isn't the same anymore. Every creak, every sound sets me on edge. I'm hyper-aware, always looking over my shoulder. 
I wish I could forget it all, but it's etched into my memory like a scar. I've learned to live with it, but it's a part of me now. That night when I was home alone, it turned my world upside down. And even though I did what I had to do, it's a chapter of my life that I wish I could tear out and burn away. Ten years ago, when I was just a young lad of 15, my favorite thing to do was spend sleepovers at my friend's house. My own home wasn't the most welcoming place, and I'd often feel a tinge of embarrassment about my family. So, whenever I got the chance, I'd escape to the comforting familiarity of my friend's homes. This particular Saturday night, I was staying in my friend Chase's house. Chase's parents were well off, with a beautiful home that was my personal haven. We'd spend hours in the basement, playing games, watching movies, and just being ourselves. It was during one of these sleepovers that something truly terrifying happened. Around 8 o'clock in the evening, Chase's parents informed us they had to leave for an urgent family matter and wouldn't be back until late. Since we were used to pulling all-nighters, we didn't mind being alone. We even got a little excited about having the house to ourselves. After they left, we went upstairs, raided the pantry, and pigged out on snacks. Then, we headed back to the basement, where we spent hours engrossed in a dirt bike racing game. Eventually, boredom set in, and we started browsing our phones, watching videos, and just chilling out. As I tried to relax, an unsettling dread crept into my chest. It was far more intense than the usual homesickness I experienced. I tried to convince myself I was overreacting and settled back on the couch, phone in hand. I drifted off to sleep, my mind battling the growing fear. Within minutes, a loud creak jolted me awake. It was the laundry room door, slowly swinging open. I peered over the couch, my heart pounding in my chest. The laundry room was a dark abyss, swallowing any hint of light. Despite the rational part of my brain telling me it was just my imagination, I knew what I saw was real. I shook Chase awake, my voice trembling as I recounted the creaking door. He dismissed it as a common occurrence, assuring me it happened all the time. His words offered temporary relief, but the uneasy feeling lingered. I couldn't shake off the unsettling sight of the open door, so we decided to close it. As we stood there, the door creaked open again, as if pushed by an unseen hand. My fear intensified, and I urged Chase to leave the basement. We cautiously made our way up the stairs, my eyes darting around the dimly lit hallway. Chase, with his usual carefree attitude, didn't seem phased by the strange occurrences. As we reached the top of the stairs, the silence was shattered by a blood-curdling scream. It echoed through the house. Chase's terrified cry came from his bedroom. I rushed into his room, my heart pounding like a drum. There, in the corner of the room, stood a tall, slender figure, a knife glinting menacingly in the moonlight. Chase was frozen in terror, his eyes wide with fear. Without hesitation, I grabbed him from behind. A struggle ensued, the knife flashing dangerously close. Chase, regaining his composure, joined the fight, and together we managed to overpower the attacker. We pinned him to the ground, his eyes filled with a mix of desperation and anger. The police arrived shortly after, their sirens piercing the night air. They apprehended the assailant and took him away, leaving us shaken but alive. The incident left an indelible mark on our lives. The once carefree sleepovers were replaced by a sense of unease and vulnerability. We learned that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places, and the darkness within can be as terrifying as any horror movie monster. To this day, the memory of that night still haunts me. The chilling scream, the glint of the knife, the struggle for survival, it's a nightmare that refuses to fade. I was home alone for the entire weekend while my parents went out of town. It was a rare situation because my parents were usually very protective and almost never left me alone. But this time, they had promised me that I would be fine, that the neighborhood was safe, and that there was no need to be scared. As an only child, the house felt very lonely without my parents around. 
The silence was deafening, and the shadows grew longer and more frightening as the day turned into night. I tried to entertain myself by watching TV and playing video games, but the uncomfortable feeling stayed with me. When it was dark outside, I began to hear strange noises from outside. It sounded like someone was walking around the house, making their feet drag on the gravel driveway. I tried to not pay attention to it, telling myself it was just the wind or some animals, but the noises continued, becoming louder and clearer. My heart was pounding in my chest as I looked outside the window, trying to see through the darkness. There was nothing but the tall trees and the faint glow of the street lights. I tried to convince myself that it was nothing, that my imagination was playing tricks on me, but the fear grew inside me, refusing to go away. Suddenly, I heard a loud crash from downstairs. It sounded like something had fallen over, maybe a vase or a picture frame. I froze, my breath catching in my throat. The silence that followed was even more terrifying than the noise itself. Slowly and carefully, I crept down the stairs, my hand shaking as I held the flashlight. The house was dark, and the shadows seemed to dance and move in the flickering light of the flashlight. I got to the living room, where the noise had come from. The room was a mess, with a chair knocked over and a lamp broken on the floor. There was no sign of anyone, but the lingering presence of an intruder was clear. Panic started to rise inside me as I realized I was no longer alone. Someone had been in my house, someone who had watched me from the shadows, someone who could come back at any moment. I ran back upstairs, my heart pounding in my ears, and locked myself in my bedroom. I pushed against the heavy dresser to barricade the door with furniture, my hands shaking. I didn't care if it looked messy or if I broke something, I just wanted to feel safe. I hid under the covers, my body trembling in fear. The sounds from outside continued, muffled but still unsettling. I could hear footsteps, whispers, and the faint sound of laughter. I didn't sleep that night. I waited, my eyes wide open, for the intruder to come back, for the nightmare to continue. As the sun started to rise, the sounds outside stopped, and a wave of relief washed over me. I slowly and carefully walked out of my room, my eyes darting around, half expecting to see someone hiding in the shadows. The house was quiet, the air thick with the smell of fear. I searched every room, every closet, every corner, but there was no sign of the intruder. I had survived the night but I knew that I would never be the same again. The fear had left a mark on my soul, a constant reminder of the vulnerability I never knew existed.